In this episode, we hit the bitumen and head into the seaside town of Denham. From here, we ventured out to explore Cape Perrin. Although it was beautiful, we did have a few hiccups during our visit. It is getting to a point when you get sick of recovering these people. But we did find some great swimming holes and even spoiled ourselves to a touch of luxury over at Monkey Mire, which is popular for the dolphin feeding. Grab a drink and sit back as we explore the rest of Shark Bay. G'day, we are Sparky's on the Loose. Both electricians. This is Curtis. My name is Amy, and this is our trusty four-legged apprentice, Rusty. We've been traveling around Australia for the past few years in our car and caravan. We're not afraid to get off the beaten track, and we have been documenting our adventures on the road as we go. Hit subscribe, sit back, and buckle up. In our last episode, we had just spent a week out at Tamala Station. Now it was time to backtrack along the dirt to head out to Denham. Oh yeah, officially back on the bitumen. All aired back up, we now had a 90km drive to reach Denham. The town of Denham is the westernmost accessible town in Australia. It is named in honour of Captain Henry Mangles Denham from the Royal Navy who chartered Shark Bay in 1858. We headed to the Denham Seaside Caravan Park to check in and then explore the foreshore on foot. Denham is only a small town. It has some nice beaches, a jetty and is a popular spot for fishermen to launch their boats. From the air, you can visibly see the channel. There is lots of little quirky bits of history to learn and read about. Like this, the Old Perla restaurant, which is the only restaurant to be built predominantly from seashells. It also has the title of the most western restaurant in Australia. A lovely foreshore which Rusty approves of with green grass. We then dropped Rusty home for a nap so we could visit the local museum. We decided to just stroll around the free exhibits which were interesting to read up on. That evening, Kurt headed down to the local jetty to go squidding. He's right there. Nice. Whoa! <laughs> Was that a fart? I don't know. I can taste it. On my tongue. Okay, I, I'll be honest with you, I did fart. He had some more. <laughs> I got only one squid, but hey, it was better than nothing, right? The following day, we headed off into Cape Perrin for the morning. While Kurt aired down, I checked the map and came up with a rough plan. Cape Perrin itself, and then we're just going to work our way back to the points of interest. 
Yeah, we've heard some people have gotten bogged already out there, so we're going to play it easy and we've already deflated down to 28 psi and that will help maintain the road as well, so well, we got to do four wheel drive. It's a bit sandy and, and like uh, rocky-ish, so... Yeah, I think it's just going to be like a mini Cape Levine, so yeah. we'll see, we'll keep you posted, but well, yeah. a bit of fun. Let's go. After a couple of kilometres, I decided to drop our tyre pressure even lower to suit the rough road conditions. Alright, take two. Still en route out to Cape Perrin. What a stunning contrast. This place definitely reminded us of Cape Levique, with the rich red dirt bordering the crystal blue water. This is absolutely crazy. I have never seen flies like this before. Oh my god. I don't think I'll be able to take a photo. The bloody flies are all over the lens. <laughs> we heard it's the worst the flies have been in like 40 years. So. This is mental. Fly nets are on. They're all over the camera. <laughs> Despite the plague of flies, we were determined to have a good look around Cape Perrin and take in this stunning place. Due to the strong currents all around Cape Perrin, swimming is not recommended. Damn, these flies were crazy. We've never experienced them this bad before. Next up, we headed out to Skipjack Point. This is the place we filmed our fly challenge video. If you haven't seen it, it's a good laugh. <laughs> Great lookout and vantage point to view the coastline. in the nav and off to check out a few more spots in the national park. We had to pump the brakes as we reached the ocean near Harold Bright due to a vehicle being bogged in the stand. A couple of long haired layabouts high on the happy herbs blocking my path. Walker sussed out the situation. I walked down to the beach to dip my feet in the crystal clear water. I also read up on a bit of history which was nearby. No. By the time Ames had returned, I had grabbed the snatch strap out. 
the only no. tools they had were themselves. <laughs> We were being extra careful not to back the nav too far back so we wouldn't get bogged too. Pathetic. These people have got no idea. What they need is a decent four-wheel drive and a good toolkit. A bottle of shampoo wouldn't go astray either. Yep, all attached. Time to give it a tug. Time to head off to our last few points of interest. Our second last spot we wanted to visit was the Big Lagoon. The Big Lagoon has a nearby campground and is a popular spot for kayaks and canoes with its sheltered water systems. these more often this is the only one I've seen in WA I thought there would be more 
that was the assumption I had. Because these are a great thing to maintain the track. So, oh, uh, maybe in the future there'll be more around. No time for our very last spot for the day, the old Cape Perrin homestead. We donned our fly nets and wandered around the homestead and shearing quarters. We thoroughly enjoyed walking through the shearing shed and seeing all the remnants of the different working stations. Finishing off our tour with a dip in the hot artesian bath. G'day guys, so just at the uh, Cape Perrin, the Perrin homestead. We're just in the artesian hot tub at the moment. It's like a big warm bath. Apart from the flies, it's pretty nice. Good way to uh, finish off the date today. Plenty of room for company. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to wear your fly nut. <laughs> <laughs> Well, after two nights camped up here, we decided to pack up and head over to Monkey Mire for a couple of nights. Monkey Mire was a 25km drive northeast of Denham. We were welcomed into the park by a feathery local. All checked in and set up. We had a great spot which was only the second row back from the waterfront sites. With our tails in our hand we wandered around the grounds in search of a pool to cool off. The resort was one of the nicer places we have stayed with a full camp kitchen, common room, tennis court, multiple pools and had plenty of on-site activities on offer. We had this little oasis all to ourselves. It felt great to relax and soak up the afternoon sun. That afternoon we sat on the beach with a couple of mates and some beers in hand while watching the sunset. The following morning we set our alarms to get up early for the first dolphin feeding show. This is the main attraction at Monkey Mire, so expect it to be busy and arrive nice and early to secure a good spot along the beach. It was definitely cool to see the friendly dolphins come in so close to shore. The Monkey Mire dolphin feeding experience is one of the best and most reliable places for dolphin interaction in the world. Four to seven dolphins visit daily with another 20 that visit occasionally. I was so stoked to get picked out of the crowd to feed one of the dolphins. 
We decided to hang around for the second feeding time, which had less people and less dolphins. You wouldn't believe it, but I got selected again to feed another dolphin. Unbelievable. Thank you. What a memorable morning. Time to head back to the van and take little Rusty out for her morning walk. After our walk, we jumped into our swimmers and headed off to the pool. This time, we opted to have a dip in the main pool. It was refreshing, but unfortunately the flies cut our poolside sunbaking short. We checked out the gift shop before wandering back to the van. Later that afternoon, we made the most of the community room and challenged our mates Ben and Hales to some foosball. In the evening, we headed to the restaurant for a meal and some drinks. Everyone's food looked delicious and it was a perfect way to finish off our time here at Monkey Mire. The following day we were up early and packed up. Monkey Mai, you've been great, but as always, it's time to continue on. Monkey, what is this? Get him, Marty. Get him. Hey guys, just left Monkey Mile this morning after a two night stay there. It's pretty good, nice and relaxing, apart from the flies, unfortunately. The flies are not common to be that bad, I don't believe, but it was still it was a nice resort setting, caravan park with nice facilities and stuff like that. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's worth it if you want to chill out for a bit. Yeah, it wasn't that expensive. Yeah. Um, you get a discount, they were doing 20% off if you stayed two or more nights, so that was good. Yeah. And if the flies weren't there, we probably would have stayed longer, to be honest. It's just it's not enjoyable with the flies. You can't really sunbake and the, the pool is pretty cold. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, be careful with your kids and dogs because the emus are pretty bad. They come and peck all your food off you and stuff like that. Yeah, the emus are bad, unfortunately. Yeah. Too many tourists feeding them and uh, they're just pretty fearless. They're just chasing little kids for sandwiches and yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. So just be mindful of the emus if you go there. Yep. And the dolphin feeding is pretty standard. Yeah, pretty cool. They do a couple of times in the morning each day. So just rocking up for the first one and then you can stay for the second one and if they do a third one and so on. So I'm glad we saw it. So yeah. Yep. Moving on now to the next camp spot. Heading north to Warramore River Retreat. Alright, keep it posted. On our way out of Shark Bay, we visited a few spots that we missed on the drive in. First up was the Thong Shack. Pretty self explanatory, we think. Next was Eagle Bluff, 
a nice short walk along the cliff top. Off to our official last spot. No trip is complete to Shell Bay without visiting Shell Beach. A beach made up entirely of small white seashells. That's a wrap. Join us next time as we track further north to Coral Bay and revisit one of our all-time favorite stations. If you like this video, why not help support us on Patreon? Like always, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you are new. Cheers, legends.